When we are working with digital text, you know, the stuff on any screen, how can we enhance the joy of making notes? What if we could use colors to deepen our understanding? And what if those same colors actually allowed us to think better? This is why I'm so excited to share with you a new theme for Obsidian called Light Mode. I know this is kind of ridiculous. I'm excited about a theme. Um, a skin on top of a node application, but I'm going to explain to you why. I'm really just have to have to show you my screen because this is where all the magic is happening. So are you ready? Let's jump in. This is Cybertron. This was my first love and I understand it's big, it's loud, it's vibrant. You're either going to love this theme or hate it. So regardless of your initial judgment, I want us to examine the intention behind this theme and what it's trying to do. So first off, I do both my creative and analytical work in Cybertron, or at least I used to until just today. Uh, this is my first look into a new theme I'm going to share in just a second. So initially with Cybertron, it derived a lot of its inspirations from Dynalist, made by the developers of the Obsidian app, actually. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, some of the vibrant uh, colors in that, especially the yellow inspired by that. The synth wave, the sound of synth wave, kind of this retros 80 feel. Definitely Keanu Reeves and uh, The Terminator. All of these helped to craft what was this initial theme, Cybertron. But I don't have a background in programming or coding. And in fact, I designed all this in the simple Mac application text edit uh, because I didn't recognize that there was, there was a better way. And uh, over time, Cybertron has started to show its age as new themes for Obsidian have a lot more user interface elements that give it a holistic feel. So I recognize that Cybertron needed an overhaul and it has now become light mode. You ready? Here we go. And this is the new theme, light mode. Let's go back. This was the old theme, Cybertron, and now we have light mode. So we're looking at the same screen, a couple back and forth, just so you can see what's going on. Look over here versus this. We can look over at the menu over here and we can look at the colors. There's so much going on here. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about this new mode, which we're going to call light mode. So real fast, I'm going to open up the light mode showcase and let's just focus in on this note. So light mode, this is the new theme. This is my first look at it because essentially I commissioned Cecilia May, who some of us might know as the creator of Primary, which is this amazing color scheme a color theory design. There's a very popular theme within Obsidian, and I know that the primary design will have a longer and broader life outside of just Obsidian. But we decided to do a collaboration on this, and this is the result. There are a few tweaks that we still have to do, but I'm so excited to show this to you. So what's going on here? First, isn't this gorgeous? I mean, gosh, the vibrantness of the header one, header two here. We can go down the list. So like, like you heard in the introduction, when we are working with digital text, how can we enhance the joy of making notes? What if colors could do some work? And this is the introduction of light mode. And light mode, L-Y-T, stands for linking your thinking. And it's intended to invoke a feeling of sense making and lateral thinking. Meaning, you know, we don't want to just write a linear list here. We can, but there's something about this theme that I think encourages making connections. And in a linked based node application like Obsidian, I really feel as though it's the peanut butter and the jelly. So hopefully you get something out of this. I'm just going to run through and kind of show you why I like it so much. So, I mean, first it's, it's gorgeous. We can really zoom in. And one of the big additions here is that we are using Avenir Next and pairing it with in mono space, DM Mono. And the contrast between the two seemed to work quite well. And in the previous theme, I wasn't quite able to use True Avenir Next. Instead, it was a different version with kind of a thinner, more fragile font. So here we're getting Avenir Next in its true glory, and it certainly looks quite appealing. We can see that there's a block quote box here where we can put content, and we're keeping a vertical theme of color. So this is always allowing me to know, regardless if I'm taking notes from a book, an article, a research paper, and I want to put it in quotes, I become very familiar with recognizing that this is the quote box for me. So as I've mentioned, I do my work here. I do creative analytical work here. We'll skip the history for now, but you can see our first link. 
and that would take us to a different internal note. And then we can see what the pop-up looks like, and I can read this note right here. Pretty wild. Um, we will go over the supported plugins in a moment, but I do want to, I'm going to zoom out one, just one. So hopefully you can still see. And let me open up a workspace, which is this showcases workspace just for you. So over here, we had the Cybertron theme. Let me just close the sidebars for you real quick. And then we jumped over into light mode. I just want to show you a few different notes to see how it looks. And right now, by the way, we're using a plugin called Sliding Panes. So I'm just using my mouse scroll wheel to move us over to the right. And so this is actually something from Flight School. And this is the arrival page, but we can see header one, header two. We can see a few different links. We can see what italics looks like. Color, how can color give meaning? We can see that there's a section here where we're using highlighting to kind of make a special little visual note about something. So moving on to the hanger, we see something that's quite similar, and then we can just scroll back and forth between these different notes. All right, let's go into something new. Let's go into a thinking MOC, a thinking map of content. Uh, this is mine. It's very personal to me, as all of these maps should be. It's probably our own personal Wikipedia, not the best way to talk about this, but maybe a pretty good one. So there are some things going on here. But what I want to do first is go back over to light mode and talk about some of the things that it has going for it, supported plugins. So the first one is the calendar plugin. So this is a very popular plugin. And we can see how uh, when I have writing, what those notes look like. And this is today's date. So if we decided to click on, let's say, the second and create a note there, we can see how it has that nice overlay. If you're geeking out on this, then then keep watching because we're just going to go into it a little bit deeper. So yes, calendar supported. You can see that sliding panes is supported. Using the yellow vertical line to indicate which note is active, check this out. Right? I can move that note to the left, to the right, and you can see it moving. And that's a pretty nice handy thing, I would say. And the yellow vertical line is always telling you which note is active. All right. What else do we have here going down? Kanban. So that takes us to the Kanban, and then we'll look into Excaladra, and then we'll skip data view for now. But if you are somebody who uses Kanban boards, then you can check out uh, something here. So I still need to play with Excaladra. I have been talking about colors, and I already hit the record button. That's good. And I already showed you Cybertron. So this is a good way to use the Kanban board. I don't really use that. But um, next up, we're going to look into Excaladra, which is an amazing plugin. And we can write in this, we can move things around. It's really powerful. Or we could use something like, um, th check out this note. So if I twirl down a header, these look like little notes, but actually what it is, is a little bit of code that's using the data view plugin. And eventually we'll have this themed. So it's a little bit easier to read this menu. So there you have it. That's a first look into the light mode theme for Obsidian. I love it. But if nothing else, maybe you got a few ideas from Cecilia's amazing design. I mean, look at these gradients on the headers. I mean, I just fall in love with that. I guess the last thing we could do is go into outline mode. And then maybe let's jump down into some of the formatting that's also present here. So if you look at the different headers, you can see how we can derive meaning, understand exactly where we are by the color of a header. Um, what is emphasis? What does italics look like? We have we're using this yellow, bold is the purple, and then you can combine and have a white there. If you look at the lists, here's what a bullet looks like. And this is what's wild nowadays is we can just edit right here. So there's nothing holding us back from editing and looking at something so gorgeous. If we look at block quotes, we talked about these already. Inline quotes, uh, we have back ticks that we can see if we click on this actual note. The tasks, if you're somebody that uses tasks a lot, um, it's not typically me, but what's so nice is we can just enter, start typing, and then we can hit our little hotkey. And doesn't that look pretty nice? So we worked a lot on check boxes to make sure that they would be appealing and not really get in the way where it feels like something you have to complete, but it's there for those who really want to use it. Tables is a little messy, but if we go into a preview mode and jump, jump back down into tables, you can see a little bit of the formatting here. So the headers really stand out, and then we can see that there's a little bit of a difference between each different row. 
moving our way down, strike throughs look like this. So let's see, I can go here and strike through right there. And you already saw the highlight, which I'm pretty excited about. It actually glows, it pops, it's a highlight, but it's also not in your face. So I think there's a good balance there. And yeah, we can see the command palette. If we type here, I think that looks pretty gorgeous if you're asking me. And then here we can do the same thing. So a lot of great action, I must say. Going back, and that's light mode. I'm going to repeat myself just a little bit, but if nothing else, I hope you get some ideas about how you can use color in a digital format to help deepen your sense making and maybe even encourage a fuller, broader form of thinking. You can use color to help you with lateral thinking, to make leaps of insights between different domains and genres. A good example of that is if you're just talking notes and all of a sudden I make a link, we can see how this link stands out here. There's so much that you can do with color and I hope this gave you a few ideas and I'm so excited to continue playing around um, using Obsidian but with this amazing theme. And if you get half the joy I get out of this, then I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, and because this is a first take, I keep forgetting to show you things. But if you look at this, what I want you to notice is the tighter line spacing. Oh, you know, when the line spacing is so tall, we can't see all the information we want to, and it actually impedes our own ability to make sense of the text in front of us. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed thinking about color design and UI design, check out the links below where you'll learn more. And until next time, stay connected.